What is the most creepy, unexplained event that has happened in your life? Me, my boss and a co-worker were standing at a surface table measuring something when the quarter ton table moved about 6 inches at one corner across the concrete floor with a loud screech like someone had grabbed it and moved it out of the way. We just looked at each other like did that just happen? Seismic activity? We don't even get sizable tremors in Northern Ireland. Leprechaun? It's always the leprechaun. I think you were leprechauned. My uncle used to have a cabin in the woods near winter. Wisconsin on a relatively undeveloped arm of the Chippewa flowage. Not too remote that you couldn't pop into town for necessities. But far enough in the bottom is that if you got hurt you'd be in serious trouble. I used to spend time there in the summer tearing through the woods with my two cousins. One morning when I was about 10 my uncle woke us up roughly and told us it was time to go fishing. It was still super early and we were all confused because it was pitch dark and who the hell went fishing so early anyway. He hustled us down to the dock where he kept his little fishing boat and quickly launched us into the water and away from the house. At this point we were all getting a little freaked out by the weirdness of the situation. We thought maybe we were being punished because my uncle had gone to chop wood the previous morning and couldn't find his axe anywhere. He'd left it lodged in a stump next to the cabin and accused us of messing with it. Which, to be fair, sounded like something we probably would have done. He ended up having to drive into town to buy a new one. He wasn't talking, though. We just sat shivering under a blanket at the bow of the boat while my uncle stared wild-eyed at the Shura line and waved a flashlight furtively ahead of us. We eventually arrived at my uncle's friend's cabin across the lake and tumbled into his house. Our uncle sent us to the loft to sleep and he and his buddy locked the doors and left, not returning until well after sunrise. Eventually our uncle showed up with the truck and trailer already packed with all of our gear and told us it was time to go home. We all thought it was weird that we were leaving the cabin days early, but we were kids, so we just went with it. My uncle was quiet for the whole long drive back to civilization. Many years later my uncle confided to me that the reason he'd hustled us home was because he'd woken up around 3am to a strange thock. 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 Sound from outside the cabin. He'd gone out to investigate when a massive jack pine fell directly across the narrow driveway, blocking us in startled by the noise. He swept his flashlight along the tree line just in time to see a man holding an axe slink away into the dark of the wood. He and his buddy had to take turns chainsawing the tree apart while the other stood watch with a rifle. He never found the axe. This was a really scary story and I was wondering if you were even safe with your uncle. But the end made it better. Somehow even scarier to hear what he saw and what they did. But I'm very thankful that your uncle woke up. If he didn't think fast, who knows what could have happened. Chills. I saw a guy accidentally drop 16 inch concrete drill bit from shoulder height. It never hit the ground. It's like it stopped existing on its way to the floor. No sound of it hitting the floor. Nowhere to go. Just gone. Three witnesses all saw the same thing. This happened in a completely empty newly constructed building. Hallway was tiled. Walls were cinder block. Newly installed drop ceiling. We had to fill out a missing tool report. Got written up for it. Had to search the entire building top to bottom for hours. I'm a very skeptic person. I can't come up with any reasonable explanation for it. Still think about it when questions like this come up. Sometimes things can just disappear I guess. As a kid. I once lost a Lego piece in my room. It was the foot piece of a robot I got from my grandma. I never found that Lego piece. Not even when we moved to another apartment. It's like it hit the floor and was gone. Your story just reminded me of that. Something similar happened to me. And what I did was dropping a smiller piece of Lego from the same spot and watch carefully where it bounds. After the third attempt the Lego ended up 2 inches. From the one I was looking for. Whoa. That's a good idea. Yeah. Drop the same kind of drill from the same spot till you find the other one. This didn't happen to me, but to a friend. He had a doctor's appointment and took his dad with him. It was in another town about an hour away, and since the appointment was for 11am, they left at 9.30 to give themselves plenty of time. They pulled into the parking lot at 10.30. My friend said he remembered checking the clock in the car when they arrived. 
and remarking to his dad that they made good time. They went into the office and the receptionist pointed out that they were a little late but that it was okay because the doctor was running behind. My friend told her that he had an 11 o'clock appointment and that he was actually a half hour early and she pointed to the clock on the waiting room wall which said 11.15. His dad checked his watch. 11.15. My friend ran out and checked the clock in the car. 11.15. Somehow, in the few dozen steps from the car to the office, they lost 45 minutes when they got home. My friend's mom verified that they'd left home at 9.30 and there hadn't been heavy traffic or delays of any kind. It's a mystery to this day. One time when I was younger, I was upstairs in my room playing some games on a PlayStation. I was home alone because both of my parents had gone out to see a movie. It was a fairly normal night with nothing out of the ordinary happening until I heard an extremely loud crashing noise and what sounded like glass shattering coming from the kitchen area I immediately went downstairs to try and see the source of the noise. I checked all of the windows and they showed no signs of damage. Confused. I kept walking around trying to find the source of this loud crashing noise until I walked over to the kitchen. I don't know how this happened, but apparently the outer glass screen of our oven just completely fell off and shattered. Slightly terrified, I proceeded to sweep up all of the glass and throw it away. I tried explaining the situation to my parents when they got home, but they didn't believe my story and grounded me for a week because they thought I broke it to this day I still have no clue what caused the oven screen door to shatter like that, and it's one of the biggest unexplained mysteries in my life. But apparently the outer glass screen of our oven just completely fell off and shattered. Oven door glass is typically pre-stressed glass, like old design car windscreens, so the glass is constructed with internal tension, stresses, chemical action from cleaners and even food, wear and tear from use, leads to surface abrasion and scratches. These slowly add up until even a small temperature change, like slowly cooling it in the evening, can result in the glass shattering. I think his parents have to apologize then. As a 27 year old man, parents will never apologize to their kids. They just pretend it never happened. Sometimes I can honestly tell they forgot. It wasn't this huge injustice to them, like it was for us. So it was quickly forgotten. Something shit happened, and their main concern was having to fix it. And if there could be a convenient reason, like a kid, why it got damaged, great escape goat. Other times, especially with my mom, oh boy I can tell she remembers, and she knows she's wrong, and she will just laugh guiltily and deny it, or get upset that I was such a bad mom. But be angry at me for thinking or saying it, like fuck just admit it, and apologize and we can move on. Especially if you're ever stopped doing that. She still holds grudges against things me or my dad do. If we ever fucked it up once. The reason it's fucked up now is clearly because of us. There is no other possibility. I work for a funeral company. One afternoon I did a viewing for a man who was having his funeral the next day. Usually at the end of the day we put the bodies back in the fridge. But because we'd been really busy and I was at a small branch. We only had a very small fridge, and it was already full so on the rare occasion, if they've been embalmed, we'll leave them in the chapel with the air conditioner cranked up, because we have good security systems, and who wants to break into a funeral home anyway, so the next morning I'm the first one in, and I walk into the chapel and the man is out of his coffin laying face down on the floor, not sprawled, but perfectly neat, like he'd floated up out of his coffin, turned face down and floated down to the ground. Obviously I had a heart attack and my first thought was someone had broken in and done this, or were staff members playing a prank? A very sackable prank, and I can't imagine any of our staff doing that for any reason. And what's more we have security cameras and motion detectors and swipe cards, so you can see who has come and gone, but there was nothing. According to the security no one came in, or left that night. Unfortunately, or fortunately, we don't have security cameras in the chapel, and if you're thinking the guy wasn't really dead, I'm not in a third world country, he was dead, he had been embalmed, you don't tend to survive and embalming. So yeah, it was a massive investigation and no one could explain how he ended up like that, it still gives me the creeps every time I go in there. 
comforter being slowly tugged off of me from the foot of the bed. My cousin had this happen to her. She didn't even realize it was creepy at the time. She was just like, arg, fck off, let me sleep. Felt much creepier in the morning when she remembered that she lives alone. I say the same to suspected ghosts regardless. If you're not afraid fear can't touch you.